Gold has lagged in the markets over the last decades. Historically, it has been used as a hedge against market uncertainties, volatility, or inflation. During the 2010s, as the market recovered from the 2008 financial crisis, we saw a pretty incredible bull run in the markets. The stocks boomed and gold struggled to perform, as some people had hoped. But in reality, this was expected because gold is supposed to perform well when the markets struggle and badly when they boom. This decades-old conflict between gold and the markets was clearly seen in 2020. Following the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, which shut down about every country in the world and damaged the profits of the vast majority of companies in the world, fears of a market downturn or even a recession emerged. As a result, the markets plummeted, but gold rallied on these fears just as you would expect it to. It rose above $2,000 per ounce, and everyone was expecting it to perform well over the rest of the year. But that's when the money printers were turned on and the stimulus checks were chucked out of helicopters and the zombie economy began to run. Now, as the markets and investors begin to wake up to the reality of the financial world today, central banks all over the East are starting to stock up on physical gold. And the question it is being thrown around more and more is what do they know that we don't? And more specifically, are they predicting a black swan event? These are the questions we will be answering in this video. So make sure to follow through till the end. So, what's really been going on? Well, central banks worldwide, but in particular in the East, which are areas where they've had trade wars with the West, and the United States in particular, have all been increasing their gold reserves. Or in other words, they've been buying lots of physical gold bars. Now, there are some really big players here. We're talking about the central banks behind Russia, India, and China. And we're also seeing this happen with even smaller countries like Serbia. For instance, in Russia, for the first time in decades, the country is holding more gold than US dollars in their central bank reservoir. After going on a gold buying spree, Russia now holds about 23% of its $580 billion reserves in gold, a percentage that has been increasing exponentially, especially in recent years. If we go back a couple of years, Russia held about $200 billion in US currency and only $80 billion in gold. Today, they have completely reversed that by steadily buying up gold and subsequently selling their U.S. dollars. According to Russian President Vladimir Putin, this is part of a broader strategy for the country to de-dollarize the Russian economy and lower their vulnerability to U.S. sanctions, as relations with the U.S. have been deteriorating as tensions around Ukraine continue to raise more eyebrows. It seems, at least on the surface, that Russia is preparing for something, and in particular, they seem to be preparing for the dollar to enter a bear market. This is why over the last few years, Russia has been the world's biggest buyer of gold as they built up their war chest. But they aren't the only buyer of gold. Just a couple of weeks ago, it emerged that China's net gold imports through Hong Kong have increased nearly 60%. In fact, it was reported that it's not just the People's Bank of China that was buying more gold. Even the Chinese citizens have also started to stock up on gold. This doesn't come as a surprise, though, because it's no longer breaking news at this point that China's economy is teetering on a knife's edge. Every week, we are seeing more and more property developers default on their debt obligations. In addition, the energy crisis in the country continues to hamper supply and production, and consumer sentiment continues to plummet as the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, continues to attack capitalism. Basically, this has caused a lot of people in China to start stocking up on gold in order to hedge against some tougher market conditions that are inevitable in the near future. The extent of this high demand has meant that the Chinese are buying gold at a 12% premium over spot prices. But this demand is not only limited to just the people of China, but also to the People's Bank of China. Now, on the surface, it would appear as though the central bank isn't stocking up on gold, but the reality is probably very different. We all know that Chinese state secrecy is no laughing matter, and the country has no qualms hiding whatever it deems sensitive from prime international eyes. Nonetheless, there is a lot of evidence to suggest that the People's Bank of China has secretly been stocking up on gold and increasing its reserves by thousands of tons over the past decade. In 2014, Jim Rickards reported that G4S had trans transported gold into China by land through Central Asian mountain passes at the head of a column of People's Liberation Army tanks and armored transport vehicles from 2011 to 2015. 
During this period, the total amount of gold stored in London fell by 2,750 tons, yet only 1,000 tons were recorded as net exports of non-monetary gold. Basically, the remaining 1,750 tons of gold was probably bought by an organization that uses gold as a reserve asset, or in short, it was purchased by a central bank. Whistleblowers in the London gold market have reported that China or the People's Bank of China bought this as monetary gold, which means it didn't have to be reported as an export. This kept it out of the news and off the balance sheets. With this news, it appears again that another country which is fundamentally opposed to the U.S. and its role as global hegemon has been stocking up on gold. This might as well perhaps suggest that they are also preparing for a bearish U.S. dollar. Serbia, a far smaller and less significant country than Russia or China, but one that has been working towards decoupling itself from the West, has recently also announced that they want to build their gold reserves. They reported that they plan to buy gold from China's new Zhejiang gold mine. Additionally, India, a country that isn't necessarily opposed to the West, but is certainly far more independent of the U.S. than the U.K., has also been increasing its gold reserves. Over the last 12 months, the Reserve Bank of India has bought another 75 tons of gold, increasing its holdings by 11 year over year. If it wasn't clear before that we might be heading into a bear market, it should be now. Central banks are stocking up on gold, but of course, it's not just central banks or individual people buying up physical gold. Who could forget a couple of months ago when Palantir, one of the most popular companies around the world right now, bought $50 million of physical gold bars to hedge against a black swan event. This sent shockwaves around the markets because while Tesla was stocking up on Bitcoin as a hedge to more challenging market conditions, Palantir went back to its roots and bought up gold instead. The real shocker, though, was the fact that they literally claimed they were hedging against a potential black swan event. For those who might not understand what a black swan event is, this is an unpredictable catastrophe which could change everything about the markets as they are today. Additionally, this could spell the end of fiat currency, bring a fundamental change to the world's monetary systems, and perhaps even a return to the gold standard. Recently, many people are starting to think that governments are stocking up on gold in preparation for this event. Central banks are moving away from the U.S. dollar. They're worried about the finances of the U.S. government, their balloon in debt, and the interest obligations. They're also worried about soaring inflation and how that could affect the dollar's value in the future. These banks buying up gold and increasing their reserves makes perfect sense. There is no doubt that they are ensuring they have the reserves necessary to operate in times of crisis and keep their government stable. If the U.S. dollar is going to collapse, then we'd expect gold to increase in value to counteract that fall. From the look of things, it's actually quite realistic that these foreign governments are predicting a market crash, a recession, or even a black swan event. In conclusion, most people right now are more likely to have their investments tied up in an S&P 500 ETF rather than a gold ETF. This is because the market has just been so strong. Additionally, we also have Bitcoin, which has dominated the cryptocurrency market as a whole, and most people see it as a potential hedge against inflation. But stocks, ETFs, and crypto are all speculative asset classes. And in cases of a black swan event, all speculative assets plummet. And that's when people turn to touchable assets like gold. It's no wonder the central banks in the Far East are stocking up more and more gold bars. Gold has been there, it has been tested, and in every case, it has emerged stronger.